Well, good morning, day two. We made it through the night. Uh, very nice sleep on the reef, you could say. I don't think the wind got up more than five knots last night, so yeah, absolutely stunning. Stars, lots of shooting stars out there as well, but a uh, bit of a warm glow on the horizon, you can see. So yeah, Brad and I, uh, we're probably just gonna go um, let's try and sneak our way out of this reef first. There's a lot of rocks and bombies all sticking out still because the tide's quite low, but uh, yeah, once we manage to get out of this little blue hole, we'll uh, probably go chase a few demersals and, and throw some lures around as well. So. Yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully we have some entertainment for you guys today. Cheers. Yeah, I think we've just made it out. Woohoo! At about a meter of water. About 1.1 meters of water there. We got out, so all good. The Grady draws about 47 centimeters of water, so happy days. All right, let's go. go some Spanish mackerel caught around the islands just uh, cryvacked it and um, after Josh from reef addicts got me on to using Spanish mackerel for bait for reds <laughs> I can't go back now so the old mullet fillet's not the same <laughs> so let's cut some thick slabs Here you go Brad Surely the reds can't resist this. <laughs> so yeah, just using a 300 gram pink berserker this time. I run out on my 250 grammers, but I don't think the, the reds discriminate. They'll still munch on that. Yep. All good to go. Yeah, keep going buddy. Just quickly get this guy up, give you a hand. Oh yeah, nothing wrong with a nice strawberry. <laughs> there you go, I'm gonna leave this guy here. Gonna go give Brad a hand. Don't worry about the net yet, mate. He's still on the bottom. <laughs> keep going buddy, keep going. It's a good fish. Real good fish, Brad. I don't know. China. Oh, is he? That's China right. man, mate. That's China man. <sighs> Gave me some curry, you did. He did, mate. There we go. Brad just nailed a <laughs> another nice Chinaman. <laughs> yeah. Gave him a good run for his money there. But uh, yeah, I mean, don't get put off, guys, when you're catching Chinaman, because if you're catching Chinaman, you're in the right area for chasing reds. So. Cheers. Yeah, just keep persisting doing the drifts and you'll eventually pick off a red, so Nice one Brad, let's throw them in, eh? In you guys. Good stuff. Absolutely stunning colours on these guys and yeah uh, Probably do a few more drifts and then try and mix it up and do something else, eh? <laughs> Cheers, mate. The sound has lit up 49 metres this time, so A couple of really good squiggles just here What do you reckon, Brad? I reckon we're going to be on. <laughs> All right, let's go. There we go. Good one? Yeah, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when a plan comes together buddy here we go mate it's a red <laughs> beautiful red emperor Whew. it's not a bad fish eh? good fish mate this thing just shut off did it oh, i'll just turn it back on yep put it back down oh He's gone. Just, just film that release. 
all that ginning around. Caught and released the Red Emperor. <laughs> Didn't even get to hold him up for the camera. How crazy is that? Oh, that's crazy. Anyway, pretty cool catch and release. <laughs> Yeah, we go. Oh. Yep. Yeah. I gave him so much line, mate. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I fed him so much line. Free spooled it. <laughs> Can you see color? It's raw color, buddy. I had a feeling, but I didn't want to say anything. All right, let's get this going in. <laughs> Woo -hoo. You're right, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I fed that so much line out, eh? Let him slurp it in. Thanks, Brad. Cheers, mate. Early morning, second day. Caught and released a bigger one just before, unintentionally, but uh, yeah, managed to land this one. Just fed out heaps of line on him, but. Came in now that 300 gram berserker. How good? Awesome, thanks Brad. Just a quick interlude here for you. Um, please watch to the end of the video if you wanna know a little bit more in, in terms of uh, some of the specifics and technical aspects of uh, targeting Red Emperor more consistently. Um, I sort of spent about five minutes at the back end of this video running through everything um, that I've learned over the last three to five years when I've been chasing Red Emperor. Uh, I thought I'd just share it with some of you guys that uh, wanna know, so yeah. Thank you. Go, okay, another waypoint just created. Just driving along at speed and that little toothpick just there is fish obviously and then you got structure and then a massive ledge comes off and that's fish again. So, pretty crazy. Oh well, we'll do a drift and see how we go. There we go. <laughs> yes. Oh, doubles. Oh, go Brad, sorry I can't help. Oh, that was a red, that was a red that one, that's all right. Come over and give you a hand. Go Brad, talk us through it mate. Oh, mate, I'm hurting a bit. <laughs> it's all right, second he, uh, day. He went off at the bottom. Yeah. But he's coming now, so I'd have to nearly... Yeah. I'm calling red, I'm calling red. Yep. So. <sighs> Right, you're doing really well, mate. I don't know why I just did that. Always pays to change your plans and be fluid because this morning we were throwing some topwater lures which we had no luck on. And I just made the decision to just cut it short and uh, come and drop some baits down. And yeah, we're now onto a few nice fish. I'm struggling, I don't know why, mate. It's okay. We've got a little bit of colour now. It's a donkey. Yep. Just be careful. That's hang on, why. hang on. He's huge. That's why he's I'm massive. Struggling. Hang on a sec, mate. I'll get the net. Boy, I'll struggle. Hang on a sec. Head first, buddy. Don't let go of that leader for a sec. Hold that. You got it? Yeah. Here we go. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> got it for you, Brad. Thank you. <laughs> yes, mate. You. This thing is an absolute dino. <laughs> That's why I was struggling. Yeah. I don't know why I'm struggling. I'm like, oh, crap. There we go. Brad's just uh, nailed this massive red. 
stoke levels are super high look at the gob on him he had a shark on his tail i got sharked on the other side but uh brad was winching this guy up <laughs> i don't know about winter mate because mate i was literally struggling i'm like i don't know why i'm having so much trouble yeah but now i know why yeah it felt like yeah like you know? he midway he was still lunging yeah, and fighting yeah, eh? <laughs> yeah, and just the sheer weight of it just like yeah just yeah yeah certainly put some pain on me <laughs> Yeah, they say that you know when you get a good red because if you're palming that, you can't even yeah. get your fingers no. and your whole hands around his tail. See that? <laughs> uh, classic. Awesome fish, mate. Congratulations. Thank you, mate. Well, we're in a little bit of a quandary here, but uh, good, good quandary that is. Um, Brad just nailed that absolutely cracking red emperor there. Um, yeah, as you would have probably just seen. So, and, it, and that fish had a shark on it, but um, we've got four reds now in the box which is plenty of fish for us um, we got two yesterday that we kept and we got two today um, it's probably only around nine o'clock at the moment so um, yeah we were gonna keep bottom bashing but uh, we don't want to catch any more reds in this particular area so we're gonna move on and um, might head south and get into a blue hole and see what's going on but we don't really have any plans um, might even head home early so we'll see how we go Stay tuned. now you can see fish just getting smashed up behind me over here on the surface but uh, yeah we might throw a few stick baits around or we might get suited up I'm not sure but uh, yeah I don't know how you can get sick of this but this is such an am amazing place uh, the Great Barrier Reef and we're very very fortunate to be able to call this our home so and get to fish it so yeah super stoked well Brad and I've uh, suited up now we're gonna uh, jump in the water soon uh, see if we can find a few crays and uh, few trout or blueies so yeah there weren't a lot of fish yesterday when we speared brad obviously got a couple of really nice trout um but yeah there wasn't a heap of fish in that particular blue hole that we were in so yeah we've tried a new one um now so we'll see what happens talking man Oh. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> yes, definitely got that. Oh gosh. Mm. Beautiful tusky. I haven't shot a single fish in the two days. So I saw this guy in about seven or eight meters of water there and uh, made me work for him a little bit, but uh, curiosity got the better of him. So yeah, super stoked to land this uh, beautiful bluey. <laughs> Mate, it goes with your wetsuit. Does it? Yeah, blue and green. Oh, there Why you not? go. Yeah. Camo, blends in. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. 
Cheers, mate. There's Brad's big tusky. Yeah, Going to jump back in the water. See if we can get one myself. you've made it this far thank you very much for uh, watching my videos and supporting the channel um, yeah it's really greatly appreciated because uh, a lot of effort and time goes into making these and uh, between running my business full-time and then um, looking after the two young kids that I've got um, and family time and commitments and things like that uh, yeah the the calendar throughout the weeks always looking very busy but uh, it's my passion I love fishing as you can probably tell so um, yeah, really appreciate everyone's support, but uh, I thought I'd spend a couple of minutes at the back end of this video um, just explaining some of the techniques and sharing with you guys some of the techniques that I've learned um, that might help you guys in terms of chasing the Mighty Red Emperor. Um, 
they're obviously a very iconic species here in Australia and on the reef. So, um, yeah, look, I've never viewed myself as an expert and that's probably why I've never really, uh, you know, gone out explicitly to, to share too many tips um, because I feel like I'm always learning something every trip. But, um, yeah, everyone, there's a lot of great uh, red fishermen out there. So um, what I share with you guys in the next couple of minutes is just things that I've learned um, that work for me and things that I think, you know, you could improve on as well. So um, I've made a whole list. Uh, there's a fair bit to cover off on. So uh, there'll probably be times when I'm referring to uh, my phone because I've made a few notes um, of things I want to cover off on. So let's go. So I thought I'd start off um, from in terms of priority. So things are the most important to factor in and then things that just go down the order of least importance. Um, and as you probably guessed, the most number one thing uh, that's important when you're chasing Red Emperor is to actually be fishing the right ground. Um, there's no point in throwing your favorite jigs or your favorite vibes or um, throwing down your favorite pieces of bait um, in, in an area that doesn't hold reds. Um, sounds really obvious, but um, spending the time to do your homework at home and that's on things like Bathy maps, which I've shown you guys in the past. And um, doing your homework on the water and watching your sounder screen and making sure you've got the appropriate sounder set up, um, they're the key things. Because if you dedicate a couple of trips or however many trips it takes you guys um, to find the right ground where reds are holding, that's gonna just dramatically improve your chances and um, ensure success and that's something i've done in my early days and every time i fish with a new particular spot i always sacrifice time to make sure that i drive around and sound that a particular area out because um, if you just rock up to the first spot that you find that looks half decent and you spend all day there you could just completely waste your time so that would be the most important thing that i would say um, and i'll just quickly show you my transducer setup because i've had a few questions on that as well so I'll just roll that now. So I'm running two transducers on the back of my boat. Um, they're both transom mounts as you can see and this is the uh, one kilowatt um, AMR uh, 275 low high wide it is and um, you can see that I've mounted it as low as possible um, so that I get the best reading um, otherwise you get planning strakes or trim tabs and things like that um, that might cause a bit of interference and, and not allow you to read at speed so yeah that's probably the biggest key thing uh, make sure your transducer is mounted as low as possible on the back of your boat um, and I can read up to 33 knots um, at speed uh, with really clear readings uh, with that so and I've just got a little cover plate because um, it throws up a big rooster tail uh, and sometimes the, that can get you know sucked into the engine manifold for your outboard and whatnot but um, yeah that's that's really important to have now I'm not sure about you guys, but when I go fishing, um, you know, my wife's got to look after the kids and uh, it's a big sacrifice on her when I go fishing because I'm usually wiped out for a day or two and I'm sort of recovering uh, for the following days as well because we usually put in massive hours on the water. But um, so time is really critical for, for me when I go fishing. And so I want um, maximum output for minimal input. Sounds a little bit lazy, but uh, yeah, I just, you know, I just want bang for buck basically. and so. Um, when I go fishing these days, uh, you know, I do use bait and I'm not ashamed to use bait. Some people out there will probably look down on the way that I fish because I'm using bait to target an emperor. It's probably not counted in their eyes, but that's okay. I'm having fun. Um, but yeah, so I like to use uh, the Berserker Meatheads as you've probably seen um, and those PE Tackle Hooks as well. They're the most consistent way when I'm using bait, um, either fishing the Berserkers right on the bottom or jigging them up or the uh, PE tackles you can use as a, on a Paternoster rig or running a 10 ball sinker as well. Um, and then if you've got plenty of time um, and you're just wanting to mix things up, you want to catch a red or a fish on an artificial lure, they definitely work and um, some people that's all they use. But um, for me, I find that if you really want to get them consistently time and time again, um, if you waft a, a tasty bait on a hook, 
down in front of its face, um, there's no better way to prospect a new area or uh, check if the reds are there. So um, that's just my opinion and the way I fish, but um, to, to get the results. But um, I do enjoy all forms of fishing and, um, you know, vibes and, and other artificials definitely work well. Um, and it just depends on where you're fishing and the location, tides and times and things like that as well. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Uh, moving on to the next one. So I'll just run through a couple of uh, lure options and uh, hook choices that I like to run on my boat when I'm chasing Red Emperor. Well there we have it, uh, some of my favourite lure choices and hook choices for chasing the mighty Red Emperor. Um, starting on the left here we've got 250 gram uh, Red Berserker, um, that's a meathead so designed for bait, uh, it's a hybrid style lure and this is a P-Tackle four gang hook that I like to use as well. Um, that's a purple fly that's been tied on there. They're very strong hooks as well. Um, obviously you've got your couple of vibe choices as well and um, jigs, whatever choice jigs you guys want. This is just a berserker one but 200 grams um, and it's like a sort of a butterfly style one so a bit of a slow fall but they all work and depending on what conditions and moon phases um, and when the reds decide to chew but uh, yeah they all work. Here's some very cool t-shirts from uh, Reef Lagoon, as you may have seen. Um, that's the Tusky one, that's the Red Emperor one over here. And uh, yeah, go support a local business if you can. He's up in Townsville, Zachary Schmidt's his name. He's a gun uh, Spiro. So in terms of moon phases, uh, I've actually caught Red Emperor on all types of moon phases. So, um, but I do find that the full and the new moons, when there's big run, um, if you focus your efforts sort of half an hour or an hour either side of the low or high tide change, um, that's been when I've caught the most amount of Red Emperor or they've been um, of better quality fish. Um, but like I said, I have caught them on all moon phases. But yeah, definitely the three to five days leading up to the new moon would be my absolute favorite. And then the full moon would be uh, my second most favorite. So in terms of water temperature, I haven't really found a massive difference um, you know with reds you know winter versus summer um, I do like to target reds in winter because I find there are less sharks um, in general and typically when you guys find a new area that hasn't been fished before a really key indicator of how you know that you found some special ground is that um, you don't actually get sharked a lot um, you actually get you know probably a good five to ten drifts over that particular spot before you know, sharks get attuned to the outboard noise or um, the commotion of everything happening in the water. So um, that's something I've really noticed that we've been landing a lot of quality fish um, because these are areas that I feel no one's fished before. Um, it's a little bit tricky these days with um, a lot of big boats out there with radar. Um, I don't actually have radar on my boat, but um, yeah, it's a bit of a contentious issue there, but uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into, but yeah, look, you know, I think a certain level of respect needs to happen on the water when everyone has their own particular spots but um, yeah there's obviously no reason why someone else can't drive over a particular spot and find that mark as well so but um, in terms of spelling your grounds um, you would have heard me talk about this in the past but I like to spell my ground so um, you know you would have seen in this video we did a two day trip Brad and I and we took four reds over two days um, you know the limit I think is five per person so you're allowed ten um, but yeah, there's no way we're going to be keeping 10 and I find that once I've caught one or two um, My biggest interest these days is just actually jumping in the water and diving as you've probably seen um, I'm just absolutely obsessed with diving at the moment um, just because it's so scenic down underneath um, The underwater world's pretty special. So but yeah, don't um, if you do find a special red spot um, Just you know pluck one or two off it and you're gonna probably have that spot for life um, or for a very long period of time because you're not plucking 10 to 15 fish off it consistently and uh, ruining that particular mark. So yeah, that's my biggest tip for you in that area. So in terms of rod setup, um, I've covered this before so I'll just be very quick. Um, I just pretty much run one rod. Um, it's a 7 foot 2 Shimano Therese, uh, 40 to 80 pound and I just match it up with a 14k Stella. Um, but yeah, Saragosas or Twin Powers or anything like that will definitely do. And it's um, got a 100 pound braid and I put about a 100 pound leader on it as well, just with a uni to uni knot. So yeah, very, very simple. I like to keep things simple, not too technical because um, I'm a simple man <laughs> at heart. So yeah, I find that with fishing, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Um, 
I actually never change any settings on my sounders or anything like that. Everything's on factory default. Um, partly because I'm a bit of a dinosaur with technology. But uh, yeah, that's a bit of a wrap of um, how I like to chase red emperor, some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the last couple of years when chasing those beautiful red fish. So hopefully that's helped you guys. Uh, yeah, so I'll just roll on the ending now and uh, enjoy. Well, it's just after lunch now. Um, the weather has just gotten better and better throughout the day. Not that it was bad in the morning, but uh, yeah, it's absolutely glassed off where the uh, horizon the sky is meeting the water, but uh, yeah, pinching ourselves because uh, the last day and a half has been absolutely amazing. So um, yeah, super stoked and yeah, as you would have seen, we've got some nice reds, we've got some nice crays and a couple of nice trout and blueies as well. So Brad, jump in, mate. Um, yeah, what an epic couple of days, buddy. So yeah, no, thanks, mate. It's been a been a pleasure and yeah, it's been an amazing yeah day and a half. Yeah, so it's been great. Ah, oh, good so, stuff. So yeah, Brad and I are going to punch it back in now while it's glassy and um, get the boat washed down, start doing some filleting and whatnot. So yeah, thanks so much for staying tuned and uh, catch you guys on the next episode. Cheers. Cheers.